As part of its normal function, the immune system detects and destroys abnormal cells, and most likely prevents the growth of many cancers. Even though the immune system can prevent or slow cancer growth, cancer cells have ways to avoid destruction by the immune system. For example, cancer cells may have genetic changes that make them less visible to the immune system, have proteins on their surface that turn off immune cells, and change the normal cells around the tumors, so they interfere with how the immune system responds to the cancer cells. Immunotherapy helps the immune system to better act against cancer. Several types of immunotherapy are used to treat cancer. These include Immune checkpoint inhibitors T-cell transfer therapy Monoclonal antibodies Treatment vaccines And immune system modulators 1. Immune checkpoint inhibitors, which are drugs that block immune checkpoints. These checkpoints are a normal part of the immune system and keep immune responses from being too strong. By blocking them, these drugs allow immune cells to respond more strongly to cancer. Immune checkpoints engage when proteins on the surface of T cells recognize and bind to partner proteins on other cells, such as some tumor cells. These proteins are called immune checkpoint proteins. When the checkpoint and partner proteins bind together, they send an off signal to the T cells. This can prevent the immune system from destroying the cancer. Immunotherapy drugs, called immune checkpoint inhibitors, work by blocking checkpoint proteins from binding with their partner proteins. This prevents the off signal from being sent, allowing the T cells to kill cancer cells. One such drug acts against a checkpoint protein called CTLA-4. CTLA-4, or cluster of differentiation 152. Conventional T cells are activated by engagement of MHC, signal 1, and B7, signal 2. Upon activation, T cells express CTLA-4 on the cell surface. CTLA-4 engagement with B7 inhibits T cell activation. Antibody blockade of CTLA-4 interaction with B7 prevents this inhibitory signal. In T-cell transfer therapy, immune cells are taken from your tumor. Those that are most active against your cancer are selected or changed in the laboratory to better attack your cancer cells, grown in large batches and put back into your body through a needle in a vein. T-cell transfer therapy may also be called adoptive cell therapy, adoptive immunotherapy, or immune cell therapy. Monoclonal antibodies are immune system proteins created in the lab that are designed to bind to specific targets on cancer cells. Some monoclonal antibodies mark cancer cells so that they will be better seen and destroyed by the immune system. Monoclonal antibodies may also be called therapeutic antibodies. An example is rituximab, which binds to a protein called CD20 on B cells and some types of cancer cells, causing the immune system to kill them. Other monoclonal antibodies bring T cells close to cancer cells, helping the immune cells kill the cancer cells. An example is blinachimumab, which binds to both CD19, a protein found on the surface of leukemia cells, and CD3, a protein on the surface of T cells. This process helps the T cells get close enough to the leukemia cells to respond to and kill them. Cancer treatment vaccines are a type of immunotherapy that treats cancer by strengthening the body's natural defenses against the cancer. Unlike cancer prevention vaccines, cancer treatment vaccines are designed to be used in people who already have cancer. They work against cancer cells, not against something that causes cancer. The idea behind treatment vaccines is that cancer cells contain substances, called tumor-associated antigens, that are not present in normal cells or, if present, are at lower levels. Treatment vaccines can help the immune system learn to recognize and react to these antigens and destroy cancer cells that contain them. The first FDA-approved vaccine therapy is Talamogene Laherparepvac, TVEC, or Emligic. It is based on herpes simplex virus type 1. Although this virus can infect both cancer and normal cells, normal cells are able to kill the virus while cancer cells cannot. TVEC is injected directly into a tumor. 
As the virus makes more and more copies of itself, it causes cancer cells to burst and die. The last is immune system modulators. Some of these agents affect specific parts of the immune system, whereas others affect the immune system in a more general way. Types of immune modulating agents include Cytokines, which are proteins made by white blood cells. They play important roles in your body's normal immune responses and in the immune system's ability to respond to cancer. Cytokines that are sometimes used to treat cancer include interferons, INFs. One type of interferon, called INF-alpha, can enhance your immune response to cancer cells by causing natural killer cells and dendritic cells to become active. Interleukins, ILs. There are more than a dozen interleukins, including IL-2, which is also called T-cell growth factor. IL-2 boosts killer T-cells and natural killer cells cause an immune response against the cancer. Hematopoietic growth factors are cytokines that are used to reduce side effects from cancer treatment by promoting the growth of blood cells that are damaged by chemotherapy. They include erythropoietin, which increases the production of red blood cells. IL-11, which increases the production of platelets. Granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factor, GMCSF. And granulocyte colony stimulating factor, GCSF, which both increase the number of white blood cells. Boosting white blood cells reduces the risk of infections. BCG is a weakened form of the bacteria that causes tuberculosis. It does not cause disease in humans. BCG is used to treat bladder cancer. When inserted directly into the bladder with a catheter, BCG causes an immune response against cancer cells. Immunomodulatory drugs, also called biological response modifiers, stimulate the immune system. They include thalidomide, lenalidomide, pomalidomide, and imiquimod. Thalidomide, lenaliotomide, and pomalidomide cause cells to release IL-2. They also stop tumors from forming new blood vessels. Tumors need to form new blood vessels to grow beyond a certain size. These three drugs may also be called angiogenesis inhibitors.